Do you like to play Unchained, but you're tired of everybody telling you to always use the Flaming Flail and the Bolt Staff, and there's nothing else that you could possibly ever use? Yes, those weapons are very good, and they complement each other well, and they work very good, and they're strong, but certainly you can use something else on Unchained. What I have here for you now is what I'm calling an off-meta build. This is meant to be not the strongest possible thing. I'm not min-maxing here. This is just meant to be something really good that is different. And that's it. You want to shake it up a little bit. You want to do something different, but still perform at a high level. This is the build for you. Let's talk about Sienna. Her passive ability, Blood Magic. 50% of damage taken, transferred to Overcharge. Um, kind of a tank, kind of really squishy. Um, we set her up so she is a bit more tanky, of course, but if your overcharge bar does go too far, you will blow up and die without the proper setup. Unfortunate. Her career skill, Living Bomb. Tien explodes, dealing damage to surrounding enemies and clearing her overcharge. This is what's going to save your life in case, you know, you get hit or something and your overcharge bar starts to go all haywire. He's also got Slave to... a. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. No overcharge slowdown, which is really good. Pyro should have this. Why doesn't she? I don't know. Unchained has it, so that's cool. She's also got unstable strength. Increased melee power on high overcharge by up to 60%. So this works in stacks of 5, which means for every stack you get 12% increased melee power. Unless for some reason they calculate it differently. I don't know why they would. Because 12 times 5 is 60. Pretty simple. Um, this is going to let you do really good, really strong melee damage, and it's going to make, um, it makes, of course, the Flaming Flail really good, but in this case, we have the Mace. I know, I know, don't dislike the video, I promise this works and it's pretty good, but yes, the Mace, you probably have either never used it, or you've probably, like, used it once and didn't like it, or you probably have never even heard of it. Um, but yes, that's what we're going to be using today, which is why I'm going for staggering for THP. Um, this is pretty good. It allows you to get a bunch of temp health and like a few swings. The only catch is you have to not kill things to get temp health. On the flip side, Reckless Rampage here, damaging for THP. A little bit more consistent, but you don't get quite as much temp health per swing. You get max of five per swing. So the choice is really yours. With that out of the way, Frenzied Flame is the one we're going for in the next line. Increases your attack speed by 15% while at or, by, uh, at or above high overcharge. God, I really can't talk today. Um, so this is, you know, we, we need this because we're going to be at high overcharge pretty much the entire time we're playing this build. Otherwise, it's not going to be any good. <laughs> the Mace is not really a great weapon, but on Unchained, she can make it work pretty good. So... We've got our power from Unstable Strength, we've got our speed from Frenzied Flame. Enhanced power is going to boost our power level, and it's calculated before Unstable Strength is calculated. So anything we get from Unstable Strength is stacked on top of the boost from Enhanced Power. So yeah, we're going to be doing some pretty good damage here. Plus this benefits our Stagger Force, our Cleave, our, uh, you know, our fire damage, all gets a nice little buff from this, which is cool. Conduit is really, I think, the only choice on this line. It um, increases your rate of venting overcharge by 30% and reduces damage taken from venting by 50%, so you get to vent a little faster. Dissipate's not really going to help us with this weapon. I'm not going to be blocking with my mace, really, ever. It's got a bunch of stagger force, so I'm just going to swing to get things out of my way, or I'm going to dodge. Numb to Pain you could use, as it reduces damage taken by 5% and overcharge generated by blood magic by 16.6% .6 for 15 seconds after renting, stack three times. So, yeah, you get some damage reduction, you get a little bit of uh, overcharge reduction. Um, do you want overcharge reduction? I, I, I don't know. I usually don't. So I just kind of stick with Conduit because it's simple. I know how to make it work and I can vent quicker. On the level 25 line, ignore Enfeebling Flames. Ignore natural talent. Abandon is the only talent you should ever be running on this line when you're playing Unchained. During overcharge, Sienna expends health to increase ability cooldown rate. So if you, you get hit or something with full overcharge, you're about to blow up and die, Abandon saves you by taking away some of your health and exchanging it for uh, cooldown. So that way you can explode and not die. This is a lifesaver and it's really good. It's the only thing any Unchained should ever be running, or else you're going to die. A lot. 
For the ultimates down here, Bomb Bomb's pretty good. It gives everybody 30 temp health and does a little bit of fire damage. Um, nice. But Wildfire over here. Living Bomb grants skin a Scorching Aura that ignites nearby enemies for 10 seconds, causing damage over time. Increases the stagger power of Living Bomb. So, yeah, a little bit more, I guess a lot more damage, um, and a lot of stagger force. This ultimate can stagger a monster. If you get cornered by a Chaos Mod or something, you can just ult, knock him back a little bit, and guess what? You're free, you can escape. The same thing can happen with a patrol. You get cornered, you ult them, you're doing damage to them, you kind of knock them back. Maybe you find a way to slip out of there. Uh, yeah, Wildfire's got some utility, and it's got some pretty good damage. You don't give anybody any temp health, but the trade-off, I think, is worth it. For the weapons today, number one, I'm going with the mace. I've got attack speed, power rush, skaven, and swift flame. Attack speed is a personal preference type of thing for me because I like the way it feels um, without having swift slaying proc. So you can do crit chance, power rush, skaven if you want. It's up to you. But the power rush, skaven is there to help you out with hook rats. This build, weird as it may sound, is really good for hook rats. You can, in two light attacks, which happen very fast, by the way. It's kind of an overhead and then a quick uppercut, similar to the hammer and shield. Um, so it all happens very quickly. So you can take them out in one of those exchanges with like maybe two stacks of your um, your 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 power, your unstable strength here. Two stacks of that, and the power of a Skaven, and you have killed yourself a hook rat on Kata, by the way. And then Swift Sling, of course, is there for when you do crit, you get increased attack speed by twenty percent. Very useful. Uh, it's really like pretty much the only trade I run on weapons um, outside of like opportunist or something. Swift Sling is really good. For the ranged weapon, I'm going with the Beam Staff. I've got Power of Infantry, Power of Skaven, and Barrage. Barrage is there instead of Hunter for consecutive and consistent stacks of power. You might not always get all the way up, but you at least get something all the time. Whereas Hunter, most of the time, probably won't give you anything because you're not really going to crit that much on an Unchained, especially if you don't have uh, crit chance on your beam staff, like I do. So Barrage is there. Infantry and Skaven, because this is meant to help out with hordes, you can do Infantry and Chaos if you want. You can do like Berserkers and Infantry. Your, it's your choice. Whatever you think helps the most with your situation. But the reason I've chosen these two weapons is because the Mace, I like it because it can deal with armor, um, consecutive light attacks, um, a light one with a block cancel, followed by a light one, repeated can take out armor, or just the light one, light two, block cancel, uh, light one, light two, can take out most armor pretty well. That uppercut from the mace that comes after the first light attack uh, gets, you know, bonus crit chance because it's an uppercut, and it pierces armor, which makes it exceptionally pretty good for uh, armor, armored enemies and elites. And the beam staff I've chosen, of course, to help out with hordes when there's too much for the Mace to kind of handle, um, ball out the beam staff, whap it around a couple times, get some power really quick. It's very good for overcharge management, allows you to quickly build your power, and conduit allows you to quickly bring it back down if you need to. Uh, but also this weapon can help out with specials a little bit, and it helps out with monsters. Um, the biggest reason people like to run the bolt staff on the chain is for the specials, you can one-shot like gun rats and assassins and things. Um, and you can definitely run that if you want to. There's nothing wrong with the beam staff. It's pretty, or with the bolt staff. It's pretty good. But the beam staff can do all that stuff too. And help out with hordes. And I think it's better for overcharge management, in my opinion. I like the way it handles it with the shotgun. I think it's a little quicker. And, I don't know, this is more fun, I guess. For the necklace, I'm going with health, block cost, reduction, natural bond. Um, I'm not using bark skin because Unchained's problem isn't like... Her green health, you know, it's not like the damage she takes is just going to kill her. No. What's going to kill her, most likely, is her overcharge bar. So, the reason we run Abandon, Abandon takes away some of your health, gives you cooldown back, Natural Bond, over time, will kind of make some of that back. So, it helps you for the next time you have to use Abandon. Um, because then you have more health than you did before. Um, it's easy. It's it's a little bit more consistent, I think, than like what Boonishali would give you, like temp health. Yeah, you would make a lot of temp health, but it goes away. You know, temp health goes away, so it's not like there's not a guarantee that it's gonna be there. I would personally would rather make like half the health I lost from abandoned back 
by using natural bond by the time my ult's ready next or by the time I, you know, well, or I'm about to die or whatever. I just think it's better in this particular situation. However, if you're going to run natural bond, don't drink healing drafts as that turns your health into temp health. Unless, of course, you've gone down, there's an emergency. Try to get your teammates to heal you with medical supplies, wraps, as they are also called. That'll give you full green health and clear your wounds. For the charm, power versus chaos, attack speed proxy, power versus chaos because you already have power versus skaven on your melee weapon, you already have power versus skaven on your ranged weapon, so this ensures that whatever weapon you use, you're also going to be doing damage to chaos enemies, which is pretty good. Attack speed because I like the way it feels, um, makes your weapon faster, which does in turn allow you to do more damage. And then proxy because concoction's kind of useless on Unchained, doesn't really do much for her. Decanter forces you to hold purple potions. Her ult's so long, you know, it's kind of proxy is like really the only choice. Um, allows you to benefit from all potions and double the effect and spread it to your nearest ally. So a strength potion, a purple potion, a speed potion, all of that will work together. And if you have friends, they will also get the effect. So it's pretty good. And then for my trinket, I've got cooldown reduction, crit chance, and grenadier. Uh, you can run shrapnel. You can even run explosive ordnance if that's what your heart desires. I personally recommend highly the cooldown reduction. Crit chance is there because I don't have curse resistance on at the moment. If you're going to run for books, lose the crit chance, go for curse resistance. I believe that is the right call. Cooldown reduction helps out a little bit because your ult is so long. And there you have it, guys. This is the unchained off meta build. If you're using the mace and you're using the beam staff. You can deal with all types of enemies, infantry, armor, uh, monsters, and specials, to various extents. It's not too bad. Um, I was able to perform pretty well with this on a cata run, just a quick play run, and I liked it. So if you like this video, you like this build, consider subscribing to this channel, liking the video, leaving a comment. I have a Discord in the link, uh, link in the description down below if you want to join that. That's cool. I have almost 800 people in there. Uh, people look to play all the time, talk about builds and meme about whatever. Uh, it's a cool place to hang out. We have voice channels, we have text channels, it's cool. I also have a Patreon link is also in the description down below if you want to support this channel. Hey, I'll take your money, let's go. Guys, if you like this video, consider doing any of that stuff and have yourselves a nice day.